and Sterling Nesbitt from Virginia Tech. Well, the specimen was at the UCMP, the University of California Museum of Paleontology, and I'm always looking for bones from a group of organisms called the Rausukidae or close relatives. So these are early relatives of crocodilians. And I came across this bone, number one, it was huge. I had never seen a upper leg bone that big before. And to my surprise, there were little marks all over the bone. So I didn't realize what I had seen at first, but looking at those mar marks, I was able to see a cross section of a tooth. And I knew it was really interesting right away because the tooth was completely embedded in the bone. So not only was it in the bone, but it was healed around the bone. So that's what really got us started on this project. You get tooth marks in bones through time, but the really big challenge is understanding who made those tooth marks. And if you have a puncture here and there, you can determine roughly the shape of the tooth. If there's any growth around it though, that erases that evidence. But what was really nice to have is the actual tooth. So we could segment it out. So we CT scan the top of this femur and through digital preparation, we actually made a 3D model of that tooth. And that tooth is identical to phytosaurs, which lived at the same time. They were really common. They were, look like crocodilians, but they evolved their crockiness independently in the Triassic. They lived in the water probably, and they were very big predators. Now what was really neat was the leg bone of this animal was very big, this uh, Rausukid or paracrocodilomorph, one of these close relatives of crocodiles. So this animal was huge, maybe five, six, seven meters long. This phytosaur wasn't as big. So this smaller phytosaur went after a big terrestrial carnivore. Well, this study was really neat because it brought out behaviors that we could reconstruct from about 210 million years to about 220 million years ago. So this fossil had evidence of behavior. And when we come up with potential food webs, we don't have a lot of that evidence that actually ties animals to other animals. What we have is body size and general tooth shape. But in this case, we're actually able to say this animal predated on this other animal. So it helps us really understand how the food web worked at the top levels about 210 million years ago. Well, it's really recreating the past and understanding what we have today. So seeing a croc and a bird today, you would have never predicted that some of their relatives would be a hundred ton monster, a, a sauropod or bipedal croc-like animals that had no teeth, they had beaks. So it's really the e exploration of what has happened in earth history.